DOH had already instructed all hospitals in the country to be employed white. The lowest alert level that directs them to activate manpower and facility resources and see if they can solely survive for the community. Based on the latest DOH data, 31 bystraster-related injuries were reported from December 21 to December 30, an increase of 52% from the 27% within the same period last year. More than 500 fatalities were registered as of December 21 the National Telecommunications Commission said Thursday. Deputy Commissioner Dallas and Rohan said the report submitted to the NTC by the telecommunication companies for that as of December 29, bills reported 2.7 million registered since, north of 1.8 million, and the bill is 743,653. The Ryan said that with an estimated 160 to 180 million active since, the 180 day period would be enough. Although he added that the Department of Information and Communication Technology is allowed by the law to extend the deadline by up to 120 more days. The agency is closely monitoring the telecommunication company's suicide registration, following numerous reports of technical difficulties preventing users from completing the process. <laughs> Vice President Indaisala, the what I call our secret weapon on this trip is former President Jane. The Speaker of the House, uh, Speaker Martin Imago, the is the ambassador here with us? Ambassador, how good to see you. His Excellency, uh, one to one, the ambassador from the People's Republic to uh, the Republic of the Philippines, members of the cabinet that are here with us today, and of course, uh, our First Lady, uh, Lisa Marcos, you know, I have to do that, uh, otherwise, uh, uh, I have not completed my DP. And uh, Pata District Representative, yes, of course, Antonino Calixto, AFP Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Bartolome Bacaro, Philippine National Police, you might do not hear, Senator Ivy Marcos, Philippine National Police General Bacaro, as a junior, there are my fellow workers in government, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, isang matagpalang araw at manigong bagong taon sa inyong lahat. I depart today for my seventh foreign travel since assuming the presidency. Upon the invitation of uh, President Xi Jinping, I will be undertaking a 48-hour visit to the People's Republic of China. Significantly, this will be my first bilateral visit to a non-ASEAN country. I took a similar journey to China as a young man several decades ago, and I was witness to a historic milestone in Philippine foreign policy as I accompanied my mother, former first lady in Madamatis in 1976, as she laid the groundwork for the establishment of diplomatic relations between our two countries. Eventually, my father formally forged in June 1975, that diplomatic agreement. Since then, I have watched the development of our bilateral ties with great interest and attention. In undertaking this trip, I continue that legacy of strengthening the bonds of friendship established between the Filipino and Chinese peoples and fostering bilateral ties to a higher plane of cooperation. Although diplomatic relations between the Philippines and China were established only 47 years ago, 
Our history of friendly exchanges with our northern neighbors goes back centuries. Bilateral cooperation has grown steadily. Today, our ties are deep, multifaceted, and mutually beneficial. China, China is our largest trading partner, a major source of official development assistance, and before the pandemic, the second largest source of tourist arrival. As I leave for Beijing, I will be opening a new chapter in our comprehensive strategic cooperation with China. We will speak, we will seek to, to foster a meaningful relation and broaden our cooperation in various areas, such as agriculture, energy, infrastructure, science and technology, trade and investment, and people-to-people -people exchanges, amongst others. I look forward to my meeting with President Xi as we work towards so shifting the trajectory of our relations to a higher gear that would hopefully bring numerous prospects and abundant opportunities for the peace and development to the peoples of both our countries. In this regard, I also look forward to discussing political security on, issues of a bilateral and regional nature. The issues between our two countries are problems that do not belong between two friends such as Philippines and China. We will seek to resolve those issues to mutual benefit of our two countries. We are rising as a nation, recovering from the ravages of a global pandemic. In our unremitting fight against the onslaught of, the, of COVID-19, our cooperation with China has strengthened trust between our two countries. You did great, I Mr. Fredrickson. Our country's profound appreciation and gratitude. When China was there to extend its helping hand in the form of vaccines, personal protective equipment, and technical assistance at the initial onslaught of the pandemic, we were the first to come to our end. In this upcoming visit, we expect to sign more than 22 bilateral agreements to add to the over 100 agreements we already have with China. As our doors open up in the new normal, I will invite our Chinese neighbors to once again return to the as tourists, as students, investors. Aside from sharing the Father, I'm a 